the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. In chapter number 3, verses number 7 through 8, it says, Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering, so I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to say, neighbor, neighbor you are, are Satan's worst nightmare. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor. Father, we know that your word carries power and might, that your word is eternal. I pray now upon the sound of our voice that every soul in this building, in the sanctuary, will be blessed, will be delivered, will be healed, will be made whole. Yes. And that you, God, would help us to recognize on tonight that we are Satan's worst nightmare. In the name of Jesus, let every heart say, Amen. 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 You may take your seats in the hearing of the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the book of Exodus, we find out that uh, the children of Israel are at a very pivotal point in their life. Many of us in here, we are experiencing some things and some hardships and some questions that we have not experienced up to this time before in our walk with God. Amen. We look at the economy around us and we see things that are going on that are a detriment to all of us, things that we have not experienced and things that the government doesn't have an answer to. We're experiencing hardships and loss and things in our families that we have not experienced before. So we are at a very crucial point in our lives and sometimes we come to this point we have to make up in our mind if we're going to live this thing out or not. The songwriter says, I believe I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. And sometimes the enemy will really, really attack your mind and your life and take away that desire to run on and see what the end is going to be. But I want you to know and understand on tonight that the enemy is more afraid of you than you are of him. The enemy knows and he understands that you carry more power, you carry more weight, you carry more authority, you carry more favor, you carry more mercy, you carry more grace than he could ever have hope that you would have. So the children of Israel, they were in the, the same position that many of us, or if not all of us, are in this evening. The children of Israel had come to a very crucial point in their life where now the king, Pharaoh, had passed away. The new king didn't know who these children were. He just knew that they were in the land, but he was not happy with their presence there. You got to understand that because you woke up this morning, because you made it through this day, the enemy is not happy with your presence here right now. See, if the enemy had his way, you would not have made it through another night. If the enemy had his way, you would have made it through this day. If the enemy had his way, you wouldn't even made it through this year thus far. But you have to understand that you are the enemy's worst nightmare. Some of us, before we came over on this side, we lived a life that was unspeakable. We did what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do, what we got ready with who and whatever. But the enemy thought he had you bound, but you got away. So now the enemy didn't want you to come over onto this side because he knew what lied in you. The enemy knew that God would use you for this last hour. The enemy was aware of the fact that you would be used for him mightily. The enemy understood what your power and authority was. So you've got to understand on tonight that you are the enemy's worst nightmare. So the children of Israel, they were in, the, in, in Egypt, and the new Pharaoh said that the children of Israel are too many for us. In other words, there's so many of them, they keep multiplying, and they keep multiplying from generation to generation that if we don't do something about this, if we don't stop them, if we don't get rid of them, if we don't put a harsh treatment upon them, then they're going to cause problems for us. And not only will they cause problems for us, but they will turn around and help our enemies. So we've got to get rid of them. So they began to do a plan for the children of Israel. They began to really, really be hard on them and their slavery and what they needed to do. So the children of Israel, 
they turn around and no matter how much they were beaten, no matter how much they were made to work, no matter how difficult their situation became, the children of Israel continue to multiply. You know how it is sometimes we think that we are not going to make it and somehow we survive anyhow. Sometimes we're not sure how we're able to give God the praise and the glory, but yet we give him praise. Some of us in here, the more the enemy treats us bad, the more the enemy attacks us, the more the enemy comes against us, we just bow down and give God worship because it's due unto him. Some of us, we go into a praise that we've never done before because we know that praise is a way out. So we worship God because we don't know any other thing and we begin to give God a language and worship in a language and prayer that the enemy cannot even understand. When we begin to clap our hands, we're sending out shock waves in the heavens and we're sending out shock waves to the enemy and putting his hand back and staying in the hand of the enemy. So the children of Israel, they were oppressed by the Egyptians. They were beaten, they were made to work harder than what they were before. Some of us in here, we have to pray harder because we're going through some things and it calls for prayer. Some of us in here, we've got to worship God because it's all we know how to do. Some of us in here, we got to trust God just a little bit more than we did last week or last year because if we don't trust God, then we're just not going to make it. Some of us in here, we've got to stay real close to God because the enemy's trying to work our minds and work our lives and work our situations and make us bow down and say, woe is me, but God said, he just needs you to hold on just a little while longer because you are the enemy worst nightmare. So the children of Israel, they were oppressed. But when we look over in chapter number three, we see that God is having a dialogue with Moses. And he begins to talk to Moses and he said, I have seen the suffering of the Israelites. I've seen the trials that my children are going through. I've come down to see about them. See, sometimes we don't realize that God comes to see about us way in the midnight hour. When we're not sure that God has heard our prayers or that he's seen our tears or he's heard our cries, but yet somehow God comes down to see about us and fix our situation. So he says to Moses, he said, I've come down about my children and I understand their oppression and I understand their suffering so I've come down to deliver them. So God is talking to Moses and he's letting him know what he's getting ready to do. Some of us have been in here, we've been in our trial a long, 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 long time. Some of us have been going through and saying, God, when is it going to be my turn? When is my situation going to change? When are things going to get better? And when is the burden going to be shifted up? Or when